All right, boys, we're going to roll. Um, we got we got Can John today, obviously 13-year big league career. And, you know, the, the really cool thing that Can brings to the table, not only is he in the dome every day, you guys see him, um, but, you know, when, when you actually, you know, he's always busy, but you, you actually talk baseball with him. And I encourage you guys to, to literally stop him and talk to him when he's not busy because there's just so much value that, you know, you can learn from him, a guy with a 13 year big league career, especially like given the time that he uh, grew up in, right. It's not like today where they have all these, like they saw him at five, six, five, seven, 130 pounds. And they didn't even look at him. They don't even look, you know what I mean? So, so the fact that he overcame all that stuff, there's some serious value with, with what we're doing. Let me, um, I showed it to the youth guys. I know you guys will like it too. Um, I got a little, got a little canch highlight for you right here. High school guys should see the fight. Yeah. Look at that. Oh! That was good. That was good. All right, so today, um, the title of the big board, play to your strengths, okay? And basically what that means is we're going we're gonna to get into, we've talked about our routines before, but today's, uh, today's first thing that we're going to talk about is, is how we're going to challenge our routines in two ways. Number one, so we can master our strengths. You have to be able to identify when you're working. Okay, and I know we all have routines. Some are creative now, some are, you know, out of the box, tea work, whatever you guys are doing now. I want to make sure that you guys are really looking, looking at your routines and understanding who you are as a player. Applying your practices to these routines to where you're mastering your strengths and you're hiding your weaknesses. Kanj is going to talk about kind of his experience with all this. And guys, to be honest, he made a living with this. He's going to talk about how he hid his weaknesses, but yet played to his strengths, and that let him survive for 13 years in the bigs. Go ahead, Kanj. Yeah, guys, be, be, before I start, man, I, I just want to let you guys know you're, you're at a, a, a good place, and, and you're in a vulnerable state as well. I mean, you guys are in high school. You got a couple years left. Some of you guys are freshmen. Some of you guys are juniors, whatever the case may be, but – I want to let you guys know, even though I'm in lessons and I'm, I'm kind of like on, on not the back burner, but my, my, my communication with you guys are always open, okay, from phone, from stopping me at the dome, whatever, man. And, and, and one thing that I want to let you guys know is, you know, ask questions, man. I mean, sometimes I just go, I walk by and, you know, if I had a major league player, and again, not every major league player makes a great coach. But I take pride in, in learning and or, or teaching. So I, I, from a pitcher to a home run hitter, whatever, I, I lived it, and, and I could give you great advice. I mean, I don't want to toot my horn, but I mean, you guys should ask me questions, and and I'm available. You know, I know I'm in lessons and I'm doing programming, and you know, the the, the practices are on the other side. I want to let everybody know that I'm available, and I'm I want you to approach me and ask me questions. I'm, I'm, it, you know, you guys are wearing my name on your chest and I'm proud of that. But at the same token, I want you guys to understand that I'm there for you as well, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, we, we talked to the youth kids earlier today and it's a little bit about my story and, and, and um, I get uncomfortable talking about myself, but I, I want to let you kids know that th this is what I'm looking for. And this is going to be great advice for you guys. You guys are getting bigger and stronger, no doubt. You guys are putting the time in, no doubt. Um, the dedication's there, um, and I'm proud of that, and you guys should be proud of it. The, the, the missing component for me, okay, and listen, and this is constructive criticism, the missing component in high school baseball today is you're allowing metrics, you're allowing – exit below, spin ratio, launch angle, and all this shit get ahead of athleticism. I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's right. But use that as a measurable, not a way of getting to the next level, okay? Because you could have great spin rate, guys, 
and can't get a freaking hitter out. You could have great exit velo, but you're freaking swinging and miss it. You, you know what I mean? It, it's, I'm not saying and disrespecting that. I think that has to be more of a, an even keel. Right now, in today's society, in today's game, all that stuff is up here. Exit below, launch angle, this and that. And all the athleticism is down here. This is your survival kit. This is when how, – show me something between the lines, dude. You know what I mean? And, and that's the missing component, and it starts with what we're trying to talk about today. Show me how to practice. They, they, they bring it up all the time, practice with a purpose. I don't know, you know, if half you guys understand that or whatever, and I'm just going to give you a couple analogies. And some kids might have heard it because I, I worked with a few here and there. But at the end of the day, the way you practice with a purpose, it's very simple math. If I'm a small rice burner like I was, if I'm a small guy and my, 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 my assets are speed, okay, okay, if I get on base, I could steal a base. That's my strength. Okay, that's one. Uh, you, you, everyone knows about a five-tool player, right? There are no more five-tool players in this game, really, in youth baseball. And I, I mean that respectfully. There might be three, but there's really – that's a dime a dozen. If you're a five-tool player like a Barry Bonds, a Ken Griffey, they don't come along all the time. But that doesn't mean you can't play at a high level, okay? So John Cangelosi had speed. All right, man, I'm freaking – I'm badass. Speed, okay? What's my next strength out of the five tools? Well, you know what? I could run – if that ball's in a ballpark, I'm catching it. I don't care if I'm center field. I don't need a left fielder, right fielder. I'm catching it, okay? Those are my main strengths, and that's all I had. So I had to build on that to play at a higher level. So, okay, I'm this. Well, what do I need to do? You know what I mean? I got to learn how to get on first base. So what I'm getting at is your practice habits, I don't see it enough to where when you're in the dome, I'm looking. You know what I mean? I see kids swing the bat just to swing it. And, and, and again, you're putting your time in. I'm just trying to put a positive twist on, hey, you know what? I'm going to be there for freaking two hours, and I'm swinging this bat. When I'm between the lines, I want to get repetitive exercise to where I'm going to be doing the same thing in the game. If I'm a little leadoff hitter, I mean, and I'm hitting balls off the top of the net, and I'm freaking just doing stupid shit in the cage, that ain't going to help me when I'm, I'm, I'm playing in a game. So my whole routine was, before I even swung a bat, before I even swung a bat, I bunted anywhere from two to 300 balls, okay? Why? Because I'm getting paid for that. I, if a coach asks me to get the bu uh, bunt down, I better get it down, or else my, my five, six, 135 pounds ain't worth a shit, okay? Bunting for a hit, getting on base, okay? Then from there, I would hit ball, like another 100, 200 balls between third and short. Why? because I'm a slap hitter, okay? I don't want to pull the ball because if I, even if I hit a ball good to the right side of the diamond, I'm not playing to my strength. So why am I going to do that in practice? You know what I mean? So I'm practicing everything and preparing myself for what I'm going to be doing in a game. It's simple math, guys. And I don't see enough of that. I don't see the routine. I see the strength and conditioning component, valuable, doing a great job. I see effort and time in. Great job. But I don't see kids that, that just uh, if you could tweak it a little bit and be selfish with your own time. You know what I mean? Like, just let me see a kid go into a cage and let me see a routine. Let me see how he breaks down his hour in a batting cage. You know what I mean? From T work to soft toss to batting practice. Okay. Got all his swings in. All right, now I'm going to go off the machine, the iron mic, and I'm going to work on what I didn't do good in batting practice from an inside pitch to an outside pitch, high, low, whatever the case may be. You know, um, I used to elevate the iron mic for me, okay? Why? Because I, I didn't get paid to hit the ball in the air. I needed to hit – if I missed, I needed to miss on the ground. And, and if I did hit it and I, I did make solid contact, it, it, it was a line drive. I don't want to miss on the bottom half of the ball. So why would I even enter the thought of launch angle? You, you, you know what I mean? It, it's given you a wrong visual of a swing path, even though it's correct, if that makes sense, okay? I am not disputing from a physics standpoint that that isn't correct. But sometimes with you kids and youth baseball, it gives you the wrong visual. It gives you a visual of 
swinging up on the ball, which is not true. Launch angle is just basically on your hands and your barrel trailing underneath your hands, creating the launch. Has nothing to do with your spine angle. And I don't want to get off on a tangent with that. But all I'm saying is, let me see more of you guys when you're do and you're putting your time in, let me see a constructive hour. You know what I mean? If you're a little guy like me, let me see. I mean, for anybody on this Zoom that their game is speed, okay, I have not seen one kid bunt, let alone 10 balls in a row. I've never seen a kid bunt a, a, a bucket of, of that iron mic. And shame on you guys because you, you're given a God-given ability to have speed and you're not even utilizing it in your arsenal. That's what I'm trying to get at. If, if John Cangelosi didn't bunt the ball, I wouldn't have made half the teams in the big leagues. You know what I mean? If I didn't use, I only had two out of the five. And I played for 13 years because I had a survival kit and I learned how to play to my strengths, okay? And I'm going to lead it to Tom. So basically what, what I want to leave here with you is confidence, work ethic, work with a purpose, and, and, and understanding the values of playing to your strengths and weaknesses. Go ahead, Tom. It's really, yeah, I mean, like, so look in the mirror and chat, like I said, point number one, challenge your routine. I want everyone to, to, to look, to evaluate, self-assess your routine and incorporate how you're going to work better, all right? More efficiently, more productive. So we talked about it before, but I think it's really good. So point number one, boom, challenge your routine. Learn the game, number two, learn the game. And I got the word your right under it. So it's not just learn the game, but it's learn your game. What is your game? Your game is different than your teammate's game. Kanji's game was different than his teammate's game. Kanji understood who he was as a player, and he understood he didn't want to get out of his shoes. He wanted to just do what he did because there was value in his organization with his team, and that's what they needed him to do. They didn't need him to hit home runs. They didn't need him to, him to hit triples. They needed him to get on base, steal bases, score runs, and play good defense. So that's why he was getting paid. Now, you have to analyze, okay, what's your path? What's your game? When we talk about instincts and IQ, it's one of the biggest things that should be a tool. When I evaluate a player, I always say, like, great, he could hit, he could do this. But he's got no clue on the chess game that's going inside of the game. He's not, he's, he doesn't have a clue on the little things that really are the big things, right? He, you know, whatever, six, sixth inning and we're down by a run and he's got a 2-0 fastball. The guy isn't throwing a, a, a pitch in, uh, a strike in six, six pitches. You got to be really selective where he's, he's swinging out of his shoes. He pop, whatever the case is, you have to think and you have to understand the game, right? And when you understand the game and then you understand your game, and how to be consistent and play to your strengths, you're going to survive a lot longer because the, the, hard, the, the higher you go, the harder it gets. And the only way you're going to survive is if you're able to eliminate or hide your weaknesses, but if you're able to play to your strengths. Kanji is living proof that you can survive in the game when you, uh, when you can play to your strengths. Kanji. Talk about your weaknesses a little bit, how teams would try to attack you, maybe some weaknesses that you had and how you got through them growing up. Guys, we'll talk about the pro ball and, and my weaknesses once, but there's a story, and, and Tom will lead into it later on, about how I learned how to switch it and all that other stuff. But just to get you to a game perspective, okay, the, the, the chess piece is once you get to a certain level, there's scouting reports, okay? So everyone knew that I couldn't hit the inside pitch. Everyone knew I couldn't hit a breaking ball. I mean, there's a lot of things I couldn't do, but at the end of the day, you, you still have to understand that's my weakness, okay? But let's say if I'm facing John Smokes, and John Smokes knows I can't hit the inside pitch, right? But why am I going to swing at it? And that's the difference between youth baseball and, and, and guys that understand the game and that can survive. If I can't hit the breaking ball and I can't hit the pitch middle in, why am I going to swing at those pitches in a, in a hitter's count? And that's what you kids do wrong all the time. As far as when you get in the game, you're just looking fastball. You don't even care what location it is most of the time. And I'm not saying this to everybody, but I'm just saying for you to give up your at-bat early in a count and not have a constructive swing on it, you're not, you're not playing to your strength, okay? 
It's okay if you can't hit the ball in. Don't freaking swing at it till you get two strikes. It's simple. There's guys in the big leagues that we can't do everything perfect, but the difference is our survival kit is better than yours. We understand the chess piece between a pitcher and a hitter, okay? As a hitter, I knew what he was trying to do to me, and he knew what I was trying to do. At the end of the day, when John Smokes misses in on me, 1-0, he's going to my strength, which is outer third from the left side, okay? Now, when I get two strikes, I have to battle. But he knows that if he throws me a breaking ball in a 1-0 or 1-1 one one or 2-1 and one or a, a hitter situation, he knows I'm not going to swing at it. And if he misses with that breaking ball, then I know I'm back in charge again. So at the end of the day, you guys got to learn and, and have a better game plan to your strengths. I mean, don't worry about doing everything right. You can't. You'll never will. But just simplify your approach, break the plate in half, and understand and identify from the, the plate. Here's the plate. Am I stronger inner third or outer third? What am I more comfortable with? And this is just Johnny basic stuff. If you're comfortable more outer third, fine. Then from there, you go, all right, what pitch gives me more problems? The pitch up or down? And then just eliminate certain things. So instead of having a strike zone this big, you create a discipline in a smaller area, allowing you to lay off certain pitches until you get two strikes. And, and, and that's what we're trying to get across. For you pitchers, you know, I see it all the time, man. It's like, you pitchers, I, I, I'm going to let you on a little secret. 70% of the time, you ain't going to have your best shit, period. Okay? So my advice to you is, when you're throwing bullpens, or you talk to your pitching coach and say, you know what? Help me get a game plan when I don't have my best stuff. When my fastball is supposed to be X and it's not, if you're going to try to throw harder, you're going to get hit harder. You need to learn how to throw backwards. You need to get, learn how to get a get-me-over breaking ball, uh, maybe get a change-up over early in the count to keep us hitters off balance. That's just simple shit. You know what I mean? But you guys are, are too in tuned, and some of it is coaching's fault. And, and just baseball today to where you're, you're getting caught up too much on the physical velocity, hitter, launch angle, all this stuff versus, you know what? Teach me how to play the game between the lines, man, because soon enough that field's going to be up. It's going to be lopsided. You're not going to be the best player. You, you guys are only in Orland Park. You're in Indianapolis. You're here. Man, you ain't even touched the surface on baseball yet. So you got to learn how to survive when you're not the best. That doesn't mean you can't play at a high level, but you guys got to start kicking in gear as far as, you know what, I need to start practicing and what's going to help me in a game, okay? That's, I need to learn my strengths from the mental side. I need to learn how to stay away from my weaknesses, and then I need to learn how to survive when I'm freaking down, period. That's good. And I, I really like the analogy survival kit because – everyone's survival kit on this call is different. Like your survival kit or your, your two or three best assets that you could bring to the table in, in a game situation. And, you know, we talk about pitchability. We talk about playability. We talk about winning baseball players. That's still the goal, guys, right? The goal, like we, we, we get wrapped up in the rankings and we get wrapped up in the measurables with the metrics. And it's all great. It tells us a little bit of the story. But, man, my test is when I'm watching you guys play, right? And I'm coaching you guys with, hey, man, did you see where that right fielder was? And you kind of froze. Like, you should have known where he was because now you're at third and you should have scored. Like, when I see a dude that understands where the, the – you know, is playing the little game inside of the big game, that's, that's the stuff that we always talk about because it is the little things. But your, understanding what your survival kit is, that, that's really, really important. That's really, really valuable. And everyone's different. So, like, understand what tools you got in your box and understand that that's what is going to help you survive, which is why Kanj is talking about his survival kit. Like, his survival kit was his legs, his ability to get on base, and his defense. And he knew that, right? And, yeah. and I've talked to him so many times about, like, all right, you know, just bunting in general where he's like, I just pick on a player. Like, if the third – like, Kanj would come up, Right. And how, like, where was the third baseman can't, he wasn't back. 
Yeah. So, I, I mean, let, I'll talk about that. Then I want to talk about, you know, remind me about pressure, how to deal with pressure. But guys, t to let you know, even when I got done playing, you know, obviously the third baseman always played me in, man. You know, they, they know I'm bunting. They, they know I'm slapping, whatever. But no one in the big leagues knew that I was a horseshit bunter to third base. I, I You know what? You had to be perfect. You, you know what I mean? I really... I wasn't that good to third base, but I was really good bringing it with me. And, 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 and it's a lost art for some left-handed hitters because when you got three guys trying to communicate and you don't have to be perfect, as long as you get it by the pitcher, all you got to do is beat them, by, uh, beat them to the bag. And it, it was easy. It was a no-brainer for me. But a way to make a negative into a positive, okay, I knew I was bad to the third baseman, right? But I would use it as a positive, meaning – Okay, and I didn't overuse it, but th this is where it becomes a thinking man's game, you know. So it's a one and no count, for example, and he's playing me in always. But I know that I'm going to take this pitch before, so I'll use this a way to bait him in, so I could slap it by him the next pitch. So I know it's one and no, and the guy's in already, and I'll I'll sell it and I'll fake a bunt, and then all of a sudden he moves in two steps. And then I slap it by his ass the next pitch, okay? That's, that's thinking, okay? That's making a negative into a positive, a weakness into a strength. It doesn't matter that I was a horseshit bunner left-handed. I, I made it a strength for me. And there's other avenues from a pitcher, from other things. I, I'm just using you as my example, how I couldn't do something, but it helped me out in the end, if that makes sense, okay? Yeah. Dealing with pressure in sports, okay? Let me talk about pressure a little bit. You got to learn how to make a negative into a positive, okay? You guys, I see way too much to where you get down on yourself too early. You, you uh, if you're not throwing the ball over the plate, if you don't have your good stuff, you know, the, your, your body language is horse shit, okay? Never, never allow that opponent from, from a hitter standpoint to a pitcher standpoint. Don't let him know he's got you rattled either way. You know, and I learned this lesson in the big leagues from Harold Baines. I, I was just talking to him last night, and we're just joking around and shit. We had, like, a snap room in the back, and he goes, one time I, – I was a little shit. I, I played with my, with my feelings on my cuff. I was, I was a little red ass. I always, I always let people know my emotions, which was wrong. You know what I mean? So one day I was, like, yelling. I was – whatever happened. Baines, he pulled me in. He goes, hey, Kanji, never let that pitcher know how upset you are. Go up to the snap room, do whatever you got to do up there, and then come back here. Never allow him to understand what you're feeling. Because even though I'm still confident, I'm giving him confidence because he thinks he has me, vice versa. If, I, if there's a pitcher out there and he's struggling with location and I see him walk around a little bit to strut, that gives me confidence. That doesn't mean I'm going to get a hit, but it gives me confidence. So you guys got to understand more of the mental side of the game from practicing and then when you get into that between the lines, you got to understand the survival kit. And there's a lot of mental shit that goes with that. And, it, and that can't be taught in a cage. You got to understand where I'm coming from with that survival kit. You, you got to want it, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and I think, too, like, great example of just knowing, like, that, that was your game, you know. And I, I really feel like it's a lost art in today's, in talking to the high school kids, where if you see a guy and, in, 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 you know, I've coached a, against a lot of high school players the last three or four years, but when you see a guy who's just baiting guys because he's, because he's two or three steps ahead in his head, like that's a dude, you guys want to, you guys want to be division one players. You want to be noticed. You start playing two or three steps ahead and moving defenses around then like, Good coaches are going to take notice of that. Yeah, you know, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a quick scenario. You know, and 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 I'm proud of everybody in the organization because you guys are working your ass off. I am, I'm just trying to give constructive criticism, and I'm trying to nudge you the right way to where I don't want you guys to get robotic. You know what I mean? I want you to learn how to play the game. Don't ever lose your athleticism and your instincts to play the game of baseball. Okay, but one thing about this Jupiter team, I wasn't around them much but I had the ability to, 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 to be around them. And, and the reason why they were so good, and listen between the lines what I'm going to say. The reason why they were so good 
they might not have been the best team, but they were freaking smart. They were intelligent. They knew how to play the game. So we had five or six guys on that team that knew their roles from an individual standpoint, from Nappy's kid to understand he's a leadoff guy to, to Peyton uh, driving in. They were smart. And, 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 and being intelligent on a baseball field goes way on beyond being the best athletic player, the best, you know, he, he, he's got more power. He throws the ball harder. But if you can't get somebody out or if you can't make contact, what good is it? I mean, th this was probably the best team so far because they, we had, sometimes you only get one or two of those players, but it seemed like we had a, a, a group of kids that were well coached, but they also took it to the, you know, they, they took their own responsibility and learned the game. I mean, it was a pleasure watching them play because of just the intelligence of it, if that makes sense. They, they knew the game and that's why they were, they were successful. And, and that, that's what I'm trying to give to you kids in this Zoom is when you get off, you know, my challenge to you is, you know what? You're putting the time in, man. You're, you're getting bigger and stronger. Let the, the component that's missing, practice for you. You know what I mean? Understand your freaking game, man. Go out there and, and okay, you know what? I'm horseshit on the middle end pitch or what? So get better on the outer third. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a tweener guy. You know, I, I run okay, but I'm not going to be big enough for an RBI guy. But you know what? Let me be a smart base runner. Even though I'm, and that's another bullshit, you know, the six is so freaking overrated. I, I don't care if you run a seven, two, be a, be a good base runner. You could still, Jeff Bagwell run a seven, two, seven, three, and, and he stole 30 bases a year. Okay. So d don't allow a metrics to say, oh, you know what? Eh, I, I'm only running a seven flat. I'm not a base dealer. Bullshit. Freaking, you know, steal second base at first base. Get a bigger lead. You know, uh, Carl, Cal Ripken Jr., to give you an example, okay? Hall of Famer, best shortstop, whatever. I mean, love the guy. The guy probably ran an eight-flat 60. Brutal. But how's he play a high-demanding position like shortstop? Because he was freaking smart. He was playing where the ball was going to be played. In other words, if he was lazy and stupid, he had no range at shortstop. But he was always the right place at the right time because he, he had to go the extra mile and understand, you know, who's hitting, you know, percentages. Where is he going to hit the baseball? Because I, I don't have the ability as a littler guy that has more agility than me. Guys that are horseshit outfielders they, they, that, that become decent outfielders, they, they, they play the percentages so they don't have to freaking run farther. It's simple math. But you guys don't do that. You know what I mean? So the moral of the story is, you guys are doing a lot of great things. The one component you're missing is the most important one. It's a team sport, but individually, you guys got to freaking do it better yourself. In other words, what, what am I going to, what's going to help me get to the next level from a, a practice thing? What's going to help me get to the next level when I'm in between the lines? Concentrate on that a little bit more with what you're doing and you're golden, dude. I agree. I agree 100%. You'll separate yourself. You guys got to figure out a way how to stand out, how to separate yourselves. And, you know, with, with what Kansas is talking about right now, it's really, really going to help. Um, point three on the big board today is create your own luck. And Kansas got some really good, um, some really good stories and some really good examples of kind of like there's going to be an opportunity. Everyone's going to get an opportunity. I don't care if you call it luck. I don't care if you call it an opportunity. Whatever the case is, if you do not take advantage of it, and if you're not strong mentally to where Kansas example is a really, really good one because 95% of people would have gave up mentally before it even started. Okay. But when you create your own luck and you're able to run with it because you're, you're right in between your ears and you're saying, whatever the challenge is, whatever, whatever opportunity is, I'm going to seize that opportunity. Kanj was in, was in, after his first year at a junior college, all of his teammates, he grew up with a lot of really, really good baseball players. Um, he wanted to get drafted. You know, he was an undersized. He, he batted right-handed. He, he, he uh, threw left-handed, which, you know, it, 
in the scouting world, they want to see the opposite or they want to see left, left. So he had like a bunch of obstacles, but he could play the game. All right. He could play the game. And the scout told him he would draft him if he learned how to hit left handed. He didn't know how to hit left handed until he was 20 years old. So he, the scout told him, I'll draft you if you, if you become a left handed hitter. Now think about yourself right now as a hitter and think about that. If you, you could get drafted if you hit on the other side of the box. How many of you, how many of you, what's the first thought that's going through your head? My head is like, I, I can't do it. There's no way I'll be able to teach myself at a pro level how to hit on the other side of the box. And Kanj was able to do it. Really, really good story, Kanj. Go ahead and talk about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, guys, even before I, I touch base on that, everything has to be in perspective. And, and what I mean, man, it's like, don't listen to what you hear all the freaking time. You, you know what I mean? You know, my case, uh, you're too small, above average or below average arm, you know, hits right-handed, you know, he just can't hit the breaking ball. He's no good. I mean, and, and every kid on this, on this Zoom probably has their own thing that they hear. Um, and on the flip side of that, when someone's like spoon feeding you and telling you how good you are, you know, don't get on your high horse either. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? The baseball guys will come back and bite you. I, it's a hard game. Never, never get too high, never get too low. So don't allow people to detour your dreams or, or your work ethic or, or your own beliefs, man, you know? So in my story, you know, I heard all the time, oh, he's too small, he can't play, you know, whatever. And, and if I listen to that, there's a little statement on there. I don't know if you not guys see it or whatever. I'd be pumping gas 20 years ago. So the moral of the story is don't listen to what you hear all the time. You know, fight it. You know, I, I, I just, I had the mentality, I wanted to prove people wrong in a positive way. You know, I, I mean, I, I didn't have the small guy mentality, but I had the small guy mentality, meaning I'm going to prove you wrong. That's my, that's my, that's my attitude or whatever you want to call it. But um, I was very blessed that I grew up in Miami. My dad's little, little league team was me, Rafael Palmero, Danny Tartable, Conseco played in the league, Lenny Harris, Odeby McDowell. <laughs> um list goes on I mean I was there was like over 20 guys in, in this uh, in my little league team that or little league uh organization that played in the big leagues and three of them should have been hall of famers but make a long story short um I would go there was no there was back then there was no uh you know showcase camps and all that stuff it was just invite so we would go to university of miami it, it's same guys it was same eight or nine of us me palmero danny tartable conseco and 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 we'd go and we take uh infield take batting practice run the 60 and they always gave me a card and go hey kanji man you know you we're gonna draft you we're gonna draft you you know and i'm like i never get drafted you know i sat by the phone didn't get drafted so i and this is where you create your own luck okay because i cared and i wanted to be successful you know um, I go, I fast forward, I go to uh, Miami Dade North and I played for Paul Maneri, the, the head baseball coach at LSU. I played for his dad, Demi. And I went in his office one day. I said, Hey man, I said, find out why I didn't get drafted. And my two, what do I need to do? You know what I mean? I'm willing to work. What, what, what are they not seeing in me? Okay. And then he pulled me out of class like two days later, he goes, hit left-handed today. He goes, if you hit left-handed today in the game, which I struck out three times, he goes, if you hit left-handed today, this guy will draft you in the fourth round and in the June draft. So I, I talked to him and Walt Woodmeyer may rest in peace. He goes, Hey, Kanji, he goes, I've never seen a much more mature player than you. You play the game the right way. You, you always seem to, to, you know, you're, you're a really good outfielder. You're a phenomenal base runner, which, you know, for you guys that have speed base running got me to the big leagues, because if you're a great base runner, base stealer, you're intelligent. You know, just like that movie Moneyball, you're 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 a winning component. You know what I mean? So with that being said, he said, if you if you switch hit, he goes, you'll be in the big leagues in three years. And I got to the big leagues in three years at the age of 22 years old and never swung the bat left handed. Never. So uh, I, I go to spring training. I got my contract where I don't have to hit left handed. So I'm ready. And I by, be honest, guys, I don't think I've ever been ready. You know what I mean? So I take batting practice that day, and John Bowles goes, you know what, you, you swung good enough for me. You're hitting left-handed today. And that's how I became a left-handed hitter because this man saw, he knew that if he drafted me and I was hitting right-handed, I would have played a year or two in, in 
minor leagues and I would have been released after that because I couldn't hit the breaking ball. But he taught me how to utilize my speed and I became an asset because I hit left-handed and I hit the ball jammed or whatever. And I, I hit a ground ball to shortstop and I beat it out. So th that's where we're trying to get back to play to your strengths, you know, and, 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 and learn and, and, and be a good listener and, and, and things like that and ask questions, man. I, I said, we, we have, not only do we have a state of the art facility, but we're blessed with a lot of great minds in that building. And, and I, I just, I would like to see you kids ask more questions. You know what I mean? Engage a little bit more. Um, the other thing, uh, get back to Sandlot, man. Um, everything's structured. Everything is an organized practice and all this other bullshit. You know, I, I'd ra rather see you grab three or four of your friends. And that doesn't mean take batting practice for 20 minutes. I see you guys over there. You're on your cell phone and you're taking, you take some swings and, you know, you think you're doing extra. No, be selfish with your own time and do it constructively, you know. Guys, learn how to throw batting practice. You know what I mean? Learn how to be a good practice player. And, and, and little things like that go a long way. And, and, and show me, call me out. Show me that when I look over at a cage, I'm like, damn, that kid knows what he's freaking doing, man. I mean, I, dude, that little guy over there, he freaking just bunted 50 balls before he swung the bat. And you know what? That freaking, that, that corner guy just freaking got the Hummer and he's freaking, he's got like get me over breaking balls and he's hitting everything to right center, staying inside the ball. Damn, he's got, he, he's got a game plan. Don't show me an hour worth of swings. It, that's not going to get you to the next level. Do you understand that? You need to understand your strengths, apply them in practice, so you get a better opportunity to be successful between the lines. Go ahead, man. Yeah, like, so, I mean, I, I, I wrote this quote down because I, I just chuckle every time that I see it. I walk into the dome and it's, a, it's right there in Kansas, still on the base. And just, if I listen to everyone telling me I was too small to play in, in the major leagues, I would have been pumping gas years ago. And that's just such a, for me, it just like, it's such an elite mindset quote because like, you don't listen to anyone and the, there's no such thing as, you know, like, Oh, I, ca I can't, you know, I can't No, Like they, somebody told Kanji he had a bat left handed when he was 20 and he, he just did it. Like he, his mind said he could do it and he figured it out. Like once you start moving, you start doing, you're going to figure it out. But recap, play your strengths. you got to challenge your routine. If there's one takeaway today, write down on a piece of paper when this call's over with, Think about how you're going to work more productively. Think about how you're going to work to implement the strengths in your game and how you're going to develop into that elite player that's two steps ahead, not two steps behind. Learn the game, but learn your game, okay? There's a difference between your game and your teammates' game. You have to learn your game. Kanji learned his game, and he's played 13 years in the big leagues. I don't know if you'd need a better example than that, all right? And then create your own luck. The biggest thing that Kanji said right there he walked in, he had, a, he had a big enough set of balls to walk into his manager's office and say, what do I need to do to get drafted? Then he got the answer and he did it. But 90% of you won't ask that question. And that's the issue, all right? The issue is you got to be engaged and you got to be willing to invest and to implement, ask questions, communicate, and take ownership of your game, all right? All three bullet points Seize that opportunity, create your own luck. Kans did it by walking into his manager's office and figuring out what he needed to do. All right. Kans, you did great. You want to leave these guys with anything? They play, they play with your name across their chest, man. I know it means a lot yeah. to you. Um, you know, go ahead. Guys, we'll you know, everything, if you're around me, you, you know that, you know, even in my voice, you know, I'm very passionate about what about what I do and, and how I teach. Everything that comes out of my mouth is it's const it's constructive criticism, but it's also positive. I'm not a negative person. You know what I mean? I, I like teaching and, 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 and one, I'm, I'm really proud of everyone in the organization from the coaches to, to the players. One thing that I, you know, I want to leave you guys with is I want to leave you guys with a challenge. Like I said earlier, you guys are free. I'm, I'm telling you, Brett Belon's doing a phenomenal job back there. You guys are getting bigger and stronger. It's going to help you guys, you know, at the next level or get to college, you know what I mean? Um, you guys are putting your time in, you're dedicating your time. Um, the piece that's missing 
is probably the most important is, and that's you. You know what I mean? You've got to worry about yourself. And what I mean by that is, okay, sit there and don't lie to yourself and go, okay, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And write them down. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, uh, and then from there, okay, I need to practice this because this is what I'm going to be doing in between the lines. That's the part that you guys are missing. You, you guys are getting too involved with the, 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 the science of the game versus the athleticism of the game, the survival part of the game. You know, launch angle and spin rate wouldn't have got me to the big leagues. Um, my heart, my drive, my, my mental toughness, my ability to play the game with, with just two things, being able to do really well at a high level, and with all that, I, I just kind of put my little twist here and there, but I learned how to practice. I, I, you know, I bunted 500 balls a day, man, you know, and then when I was asked to bunt or that's where I got on base, it, it just made my asset much better. You got, that's the piece that's missing. You know, you guys are putting your time in. My only thing is I, I want to challenge every kid and make sure that you write something down and, and, and don't lie to yourself. Guys that are not high velocity guys, I'm not a pitcher, okay? But guys that aren't high velocity guys, you know, stop spending so much more time on, oh, I got to throw harder. I got to throw harder. Get freaking people out. You know what I mean? Understand that, hey, I might not be that high velocity guy, so I better start doing X. I better start learning how to get a breaking ball over. Doug Drabick, my teammate, won the Cy Young. He threw 88 to 92 miles an hour but he started every hitter off with a get me over breaking ball. You pitchers that don't have high velocity, the best count that you could ever, ever be in is an 0 and 1 count with a breaking ball. Okay. But if you don't practice it, if you throw the breaking ball and you're 1 and 0, now, now you're, you're up Shit's Creek. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to hit the mental side of the game a little bit more for you guys. Get back to being simple. Learn how to play with, with mental toughness and, and, and pressure. Pressure to me is the, the, the biggest thing that you kids got to learn where it's a, it's a game of failure and you got to be mentally tough. There, there, you you got to learn how to get bypass that and stop putting pressure on yourself. And, and the way I dealt with it is there was always a, a worst case scenario. There was always, you know, I didn't get too, you know, hooked up in the, oh, I'm over 10. What do I got to do? You know what I mean? I would, I would always try to, you know, stick and move or, you know, don't, don't let it pound you down. When you feel that, you got to back off. And sometimes less is more in, in those situations. When you grind and grind and grind and you're trying and trying, the pressure mounts and then you're still horseshit versus, you know what, I'm 0 for 10. Let me, let me back off my swings today. Let me just give my mind a break. Let me clear my head a little bit and go from there. I mean, it, it's, it's, you, you got to listen to your body. You got to listen. It sounds corny, but that's, that's how guys play at a high level in a game of failure. So I want to leave you guys today. One, I'm proud of everyone in the organization. Start getting more engaged in conversation. Start getting more selfish with the way you practice. And what I mean by selfish is practice to what's going to get John Cangelosi better, not, hey, you know what? I'm going to take 100 swings just to take 100 swings. You know, you, you got to figure out what your game is, and then, and then go from there. So the only component I'm telling, I want to leave you guys with, write it down, engage, and then from there, your practice, practice to what's going to get you better between the lines. And I appreciate, you know, and I appreciate all your efforts, and I love that you guys wear my name on your chest. All right, man. Cans, awesome. All right, we'll see you guys on, uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, we might go later next Sunday because I think the Jordan docks off. So um, I know teams are, everyone's asking about teams. I know teams are coming out soon. Uh, Tyler's going to get, he's doing all that. They should be coming out real, real quick. So uh, hang tight with that. Cans, thanks again, man. A lot of value there. Uh, no worries. Anytime, dude. Ho hopefully we get back in the dome soon so I can see your ugly mug. <laughs> all right. Take all care, right, guys. Man, guys. All right. All right. All right.